Well, here we are at Supercomputing 2019. I'm Duncan Poole. I'm the Director of Platform Alliances for NVIDIA in the High Performance Group. And I'd like to introduce David Lacombe from ARM. I'm uh, David Lacombe. I'm a Senior Director of HPC Tools and uh, Infrastructure Tools at ARM. Where do you think is the opportunity for ARM servers in HPC now. The first very large ARM HPC system was announced many years ago with the, the Rikon system, which is using the, the post-K Fugaku system, which has got uh, Fujitsu CPUs in, which have a SVE architecture, um, and that's going to be one of the largest systems on the planet when that comes out. There's a biggest uh, system currently in use actually doing production sciences at the Sandia National Labs, and we've been working really closely with them, but uh, Sandia, they set up a 145,000 core uh, Marvel Thunder X2 system. Excellent. And uh, you know that was actually ARM's first top 500 entry you know, 12 months ago. And uh, that gave them an opportunity to prove out ARM's uh, porting of, of, of a typical HPC software stack. ARM's unique sort of business model is really enabling people to bring other SOCs together and, and make choices that, that fit appropriately for a deep learning system with an NVIDIA GPU on it, whether it's a HPC system which has a certain number of cores and those silicon partners can make a lot of choices. You know, Marvell or we'll see Ampere, see you know, uh, EPI, the European Processor Initiative as well. It's something that the HPC market is really keen on because it sees the need to have choice in the server market. Um, plus NVIDIA together, what does this mean for, for you? What do you think it does to the future of supercomputing? I think what it means is that ARM became essential because they're the processor for, especially for those edge devices and being able to, to show that flow all the way through potentially with the same mm. software stack, same development tools, uh, it's, it's a big deal.